Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I will present you the paper entitled Learning Contextual Tag Embeddings for Cross-Modal Alignment of Audio and Tags. So a bit of context. Nowadays, deep learning has enabled uh, to train models that achieve very high performance, uh, but they require a sufficient amount of labeled data, which in, in, in some cases can be difficult and costly to obtain. Luckily, uh, we have nowadays access to a large amount of real-world recordings uh, online, but annotating it exhaustively would require a lot of effort. So here we want to provide methodologies in order to learn audio representation that can serve as a base for different applications in machine listening. And we want to take advantage of this uh, online audio content, which is often quite diverse, uh, present uh, in, in big quantity, but that are kind of weakly annotated in the sense that users uh, of these platforms, they didn't necessarily agree on using a set of predefined categories to annotate the content, and they rather use their own words uh, through descriptions or, or tags, for example. So we took inspiration from different works, and one of them is this one, quite popular, uh, this idea of SIMCLR, where the author, in a self-supervised way, learned some visual representation. So here they apply some data augmentation techniques and they obtain different images that are associated. And then through contrastive learning, they try to uh, bring embeddings of these two associated images close from each other and push them away from other instances in a batch. Another interesting work is this idea of aligning the representation of autoencoders. So here the author, they treat images with one variational autoencoder and associated text uh, annotations with another one. And uh, to the, the, the popular, the vanilla uh, variational autoencoder, uh, they add this uh, cost reconstruction losses and uh, distribution alignment loss. And this way they infuse some semantics into uh, the image encoder, and they then use this encoder as a feature extractor. Um, and, and in their case, it, it showed a good result in the context of zero-shot learning. So we had the idea of, of aligning the, the, the we, we like this idea of aligning representation of autoencoders, uh, but we wanted to do it in a kind of simpler way and use this idea of contrastive learning. So in here, we took sounds from free sound a large uh, online sound collection uh, platform for sharing sounds. And we extract in spectrogram with them. And we use one or two encoder uh, to encode and, and reconstruct the spectrogram. Uh, we then uh, used the associated tags here, uh, which we encode in a multi hot uh, vector, and uh, the same way we, we apply the, the autoencoder uh, architecture here. We then uh, add uh, the contrastive learning loss, the antics and plus here, uh, in order to infuse some semantics from the text uh, to the audio encoder. So the result was an audio encoder um, that uh, uh, could reflect some semantic properties from the tax and some kind of more low level properties that, that are learned with the auto encoder here. Uh, so it, it, it worked well. I mean, it gave decent performance in different classification tasks, but there were some, some drawbacks of the way we were using the tag based autoencoder. I mean, the way we were encoding the tags. And um, well, we can already see some of these problems here by representing uh, the tag embeddings uh, with this uh, TSNE decomposition here. So if we zoom a bit, for example, we observe that in some cases it groups like uh, related terms together, like wind and onomatopoeia words like swoosh, whoosh, or swish, uh, which is nice. Uh, we find here some instrument sounds that are clustered together. Uh, and we find a wheel with a bike, which makes sense. But run, we, well, we can find vehicle, but we cannot find maybe car or other things we would expect. And, and it mixes terms with freeze and stuff. And as we go wider, we, we kind of lose some kind of global semantic there, um, which, which is sad uh, there. So, well, of course, uh, instead of learning uh, 
by yourself with the autoencoder, the, the tag representation, we could take advantage of word embeddings, uh, such as word to vec, for example. But it, it, it brings the question, how can we aggregate different word embeddings there? Uh, one sound has different tags, like here we get different embeddings. How do we obtain one, one embedding vector representing these sounds from these tags? And here uh, we investigated the idea of using self-attention and in particular the scale dot product attention here in order to obtain contextualized tag representation that we were then aggregating uh, by summing uh, this, this tag there. And then we add, like before, the, we added the audio uh, autoencoder and we used the same loss in order to maximize the agreement of the two uh, embeddings there. So uh, how does it look actually the, the word to vec? So we train actually word to vec with tags from Freeson with the content from our platform there. And uh, if we zoom in, in a bit, well, we observe um, current things like, uh, oops, for example, here we see some terms referring to some kind of movie um, ambience kind of things, horror, creepy, and so on. Here we find things that are maybe not that good. Uh, they don't always go together. And here, if you remember before, we had wind and some onomatopoeic words, and here we, we get even more of this. So, so it seems that uh, it's achieving a kind of better global semantic there with, with this word to vec. Uh, method here, which is nice. So of course we performed some experiments where uh, we compared different models in a two-step approach. First by training a deep audio embedding model, and then uh, evaluated as a feature extractor in different target classification tasks. We compared uh, approaches using single or multiple attention heads, or uh, the idea of changing the dimension of the word embedding there. Uh, the downstream classification task were sound event classification, music genre classification, and finally instrument classification. So here are the results in terms of accuracy uh, with a multi-layer perception as uh, the classifier in this downstream task. Uh, first, we observe that our approaches outperform our MFUC baseline, uh, which shows that this method is adequate for learning semantically and rich features. And we see that uh, in some cases, we can obtain better results when we add more heads there uh, in the attention. Uh, and well, to, to conclude quickly some results where well, we, we achieve reasonable performance here. And uh, perhaps one interesting idea here, uh, when we tried uh, to use different dimensions for the word to vec embeddings, uh, they ended up not being the same dimension as the audio embedding. So actually here we use the projection head linear layer here to adapt the dimension and reduce the dimension of the audio embedding to the one of uh, the word embeddings. And, and this didn't really hinder uh, the performance of, uh, of our model, which, which is great there. So this was it. Uh, thank you for your attention.